Hello, this is the video lecture for uh, wellness plans and pet insurance. Um, so we're going to talk about wellness plans first. Uh, you can see in your textbook you'll be able to read about wellness plans and pet insurance on pages 317 to 328. <coughs> Sorry, sneezing here. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about wellness plans first. So wellness plans and pet insurance are two different things. Um, wellness plans are usually offered by a specific clinic, whereas pet insurance is offered by like an insurance company. So let's talk about wellness plans first. Offered by individual clinics. We already covered that. Um, so wellness plans are basically a little bit of a setup to incorporate all of the preventative recommendations that a patient would need over a one year period. So preventative medicine is things that we do pre to prevent the animal from getting sick. That includes things like uh, parasite treatments and deworming, heartworm prevention, tick prevention, um, vaccines to prevent getting illnesses that the vaccines uh, protect against. Um, if it's a young animal, it would include like spay and neuter surgeries. Uh, it includes um, blood testing, right? For things that uh, like, like screening tests and of course, um, physical exams, right? So those are all things that are preventative care. Uh, so a wellness plan isn't gonna be any good for um, an animal that's already sick. Okay, so that's, that's not what a wellness plan is. A wellness plan is um, a plan to kind of keep the animal as healthy as possible uh, by doing all those preventative recommendations. So usually the individual clinic's gonna offer it for a one year period and some clinics are even gonna divide it into an equally monthly, monthly payment. So let's say all the things that are on the list that would go into that wellness plan for the one year period for that animal would cost, let's say $1,200. I'm just pulling a number out of the air here. Uh, divide that by 12, it's only a hundred bucks a month, right? So if you were to go in and have to do all of those uh, preventative things in one appointment, $1,200 is a lot of money. But if you can spread it over the six months or the 12 months, a hundred bucks a month isn't that bad, right? So, and again, I'm just pulling numbers out of the air. I'm not saying it would cost $1,200 to get vaccines and um, like heartworm prevention. I'm just pulling a number out of the air that was easy to divide by 12. Uh, so some clinics also might offer additional discounts on food or other products as an incentive uh, or offer complimentary exams during the year if the pet does get sick. Uh, so this only ends up padding the bottom line, right? If people get a discount, if they get 10%, 10% is nothing really, it doesn't even cover the tax. But if people know that they can spend 10% less at your facility on food and treats, they're gonna go to your facility. Uh, so you're going to end up making more money then uh, because you've got that little bit of a discount incentive. And then also uh, offering complimentary exams if the pet gets sick during the year, they're still going to have to pay for any treatments that need to be done. You, they just have the exam fee waived. People are going to be more likely to bring their pet in if the animal is showing signs of illness because they know that the exam is free right? So they don't think of, well, oh, I got, it's going to cost me at least $70, even if there's nothing wrong with them. They'll be like, hey, great, I can get it checked and it's peace of mind. And then that way you end up catching things earlier before they become like really harmful and more difficult to treat. So let's talk about the benefits of having a wellness plan then. So if a pet is part of a wellness plan, they're much more likely to get gold standard care they're going to do all of those preventative medication things that we recommend for animals because they, they have it included in the wellness plan. Also, if you catch illnesses early, you usually have better treatment outcomes for the animal. So if we are doing, um, you know, at least annual or semi-annual blood work with adult animals, we're going to start to see if there's trends that maybe the kidneys are starting to become harmed or the liver or something like that. And we can start taking action way earlier. If you guys remember, I think I've said this about a hundred times already and we haven't even been together that long yet, but the kidney and the liver don't start to show signs of illness in the animal until they are 75% depleted. 
So um, when they've lost 75, three quarters of their capacity for work in the body, that's when the animal will start to show signs. When they're already 75% gone, it's hard to treat and get them into a comfortable state. If we can diagnose that when it's maybe only 25% gone, that's great. If we're catching that early, we can do things to kind of help those kidneys and support those kidneys. So catching things earlier, we're going to have better treatment outcomes. If a wellness plan is divided into monthly payments, the owner worries less about money, right? Again, a $1,200 hit at one time feels big, uh, but $100 a month feels a lot more affordable, even though it's the same amount of money. And for the hospital, a wellness plan is really nice because especially if they have those monthly payments, there's guaranteed income every single month. Um, and that's a nice thing. The, you can really do a lot of planning in terms of growth if you know what your guaranteed income is going to be. And then anything else is just extra cake on top, right? Um, so that can help to alleviate some of those months when uh, it's a little bit slower and maybe you're not seeing as much um, appointments coming through the door. You're still getting in that uh, wellness plan uh, monthly payment. If discounts are offered on food and products, it results in more income for the clinic. So even though the product is discounted, the owner will probably buy more. Uh, you'll get more purchases made at your facility versus that owner purchasing things at like a pet store, or the grocery store. Uh, so you'll see more income for the clinic that way. It's an excellent uh, way to get some supplemental cash in the building too. And if those exams are offered as complimentary during the year, owners are more likely to bring their pet in as soon as they know, notice something wrong, instead of waiting and it getting worse and worse and harder to treat. Uh, so that's, that's a great thing for the animals because they're getting that attention right away. And it's a good thing for us, right? Because we can be more successful in our treatments as well. Having a wellness plan where someone is committed to your clinic um, for a full year, it's going to develop loyal clients and those loyal clients are much more likely to share your facility with uh, word of mouth, right? Uh, especially with things like um, social media these days, people have a really big influence and a loyal client is basically a walking billboard for us. So that is a, a really good thing if we can get people coming in our doors because of word of mouth. And wellness plans are really marketable. They make the clinic stand out in the crowd. So I had done a little bit of research when I was preparing the, these note packages. Um, and I, I did some research on what facilities in Winnipeg are offering wellness plans. So a couple of them mention them on their website, but they don't really go into details about them. I could only find one facility that was offering uh, wellness plans that had details um, on their website about what was included in which one and um, and like you know some of the extras like the discounts or the exams and stuff uh, so I could only find one that's not to say that there aren't more but I could only find one that readily advertised it I feel like if you offered them you would advertise it because it's really marketable I would love to have a wellness plan as like a, a pet owner because um, those are things that I want to do for my animal uh, but it's one of the first things that people neglect if money is a little bit tight because it's preventative. The animal's not actually sick. So if I don't go in this time, well, it'll be fine, right? Um, so this is, I think, really marketable. I want to do those things for my animal. I can split it up into like, yeah, 50 bucks, 100 bucks a month. I'm in. That sounds great. I would totally do that. I think wellness plans are a great idea. So some examples of things that could be included in wellness plans Obviously, at least an annual exam is going to be included. Uh, age appropriate vaccines. So the vaccines that animals need change throughout their life um, when they're puppies and kittens. And we'll learn more about this immune in immunity. But when they're puppies and kittens, they get like at least four sets of vaccines in that first year. Uh, but after that, they just usually get one vaccine per year. We can kind of stagger them out. Uh, so whatever vaccines they're due for that year, uh, deworming products, um, uh, I'm just wondering if you, yeah, so things like heartworm prevention or intestinal dewormers, 
Um, just parasite products in general should maybe be the term here because uh, so, you know you can include things like tick prevention as well. There should be blood work done, or there could be blood work done, I mean. Uh, there could be anal urinalysis, fecal exams to check for parasites. In more senior animals, we can include bl blood pressure checks. And um, actually, I don't know why I included this note here, but uh, insured pets must have annual wellness checkups. So if you have an animal with pet insurance, they need to have that annual wellness anyway. Um, so often this wellness plan goes really nice hand in hand with insurance as well. I'm not sure why I can't, I don't know why I put it there. Sorry, it feels like it doesn't flow nice. So these are um, examples that I pulled from that website I talked about, that local clinic that had um, the examples up on their site of what they included in their wellness plans. So from a local Winnipeg vet clinic, they offered unlimited physical exams throughout the year included with all plans. And they also offered the courtesy discount on food and vet care products. Uh, so that's really great for the client and um, it's just like value added, right? And then um, not only do they get all the preventative stuff, they also get those and that's, that's great. I feel like that's a sellable product. Um, they also had the option to add on to adult and senior plans a dental wellness plan. So that included uh, a dental prophylaxis, so like a teeth cleaning, uh, tooth polishing, and radiographs. So that's a really excellent thing to have as an add-on as well. So many animals have periodontal disease. So uh, they had on their website uh, broken into categories. So they had kitten and puppy wellness. So puppy wellness included the first exam, all vaccines and boosters that they would need. So that includes distemper, uh, adenovirus and um, parvovirus for uh, dogs, rabies, bordetella and Lyme disease. For cats, it included FVRCP, so that's feline viral rhinotracheitis, Khaleesi virus and panleukopenia virus. Uh, it includes uh, feline leukemia virus and rabies. Uh, it includes fecal tests for both to check for intestinal parasites. It included a heartworm and Lyme test for dogs or a feline leukemia or uh, FIV or feline AIDS test for cats. The spay and neuter surgery and a microchip. So their plan did not include preventive drugs. So things like heartworm medication, and um or like dewormer medications okay uh but they include all the other medical stuff and i suppose it kind of makes sense to have those drugs billed separately because depending on the size of the animal the cost is going to be very different so once that puppy and kitten has grown up into an adult they have an adult wellness plan so that includes an annual wellness exam annual vaccines depending whatever they're due for a fecal test to test for intestinal parasites, and then a heartworm Lyme test for the dogs, feline leukemia, FIV heartworm test for outdoor cats. Cats indoors aren't really very likely to contract those viruses. Uh, and then an annual CBC, so complete blood count, a blood chemistry, and a UA or a urinalysis. So we can do that annually, and if we do see anything strange cropping up on the blood work, we can get it treated right away. So your adult animal has made it to senior now. Oh, this is supposed to say senior wellness plan, sorry. Um, I'll have to edit that on your guys' sheets. Let's change that. Okay, so feline and canine senior wellness plans include semi-annual wellness exams. So that's two exams per year. Uh, it also includes those annual vaccinations. So again, whatever they would be due for. The fecal test, uh, heartworm Lyme test, feline leukemia, et cetera, test for the outdoor cats. And then semi-annual, so that's twice per year. We'll do that CBC, the chemistry, and the UA. And in cats, we're gonna add in a thyroid test because cats as they age become really prone to uh, hyperthyroidism. So those are some examples of different wellness plans that are uh, available within our city. So uh, I tried to keep it really local so that we have examples of things that are actually here. Um, 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but like these sound great, right? I, I'd really get on board with this as a clinic, as, as, a, uh, as a client, I'd be really on board. So just to reiterate, our wellness plans cover preventative medicine. So they're covering all the things that we want to do for our animals to prevent them from getting sick. So pet insurance is a different thing entirely. Um, they're offered by pet insurance companies uh, and these usually cover accidents and illness but usually don't cover preventative care. Um, there is, um, gee, I can't remember which one offers it. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember which one offers. Um, they have tiered uh, presentations of different types of insurance and their highest tier does include preventative medicine. Um, but it's um, like as the highest tier, it's the most expensive one. But most of the pet insurance companies do not cover preventative care at all. You're just seeing accident and illness in there. So if you have a wellness plan and a pet insurance plan, your pet's covered for all the preventative stuff and all the accident and illness stuff. So pet insurance and wellness plans can be a really complementary thing to have together. So there are some benefits of having pet insurance. Pets can receive superior care because the owner isn't as concerned about money because the pet insurance covers a lot of the costs of diagnosis and treatment. Um, the owner can be a lot more relaxed and make those treatment choices, um, you know, choose that Cadillac of treatment plans as opposed to like the rusted out 1992 Toyota Corolla kind of thing. Uh, so, um, one thing that's nice about pet insurance, because it's offered by a pet insurance company, it's separate from the clinic. So a wellness plan is locked into one facility because it's the facility that's offering the wellness plan. Um, so if something happens, let's say you decide you do not want to go to that facility anymore, um, it's not transferable to a different facility, or maybe you're traveling or something, it's just, it's not transferable. But pet insurance, it is available at any hospital you go to because it is through a pet insurance company. So you don't have to, you're not like locked into one specific hospital. So that can be nice too if you're traveling because you will still be covered because again, it's not linked to any one hospital. And a nice thing is that if you do need to see a veterinarian and you're traveling with your pet, you can call the insurance company and they can recommend facilities nearby for you to visit. So they can help you to find the place that you should, you should go to. Um, pet insurance offers the owner peace of mind if their pet has an emergency. Uh, so lots of people, lots of people with pets, um, <coughs> sorry they kind of often are living paycheck to paycheck right like so many of us are uh so if a big emergency comes up and all of a sudden you have like a two thousand dollar vet bill that can hurt a lot and be a, a painful bill to have to try to pay if you have pet insurance that covers those sudden and unexpected emergencies you can relax a lot about that you don't have to be worried um, and heaven forbid, you don't have to make that horrible decision of euthanizing a pet because you can't afford to treat it. Uh, so a big benefit of pet insurance is that claims, making claims is really easy uh, and the reimbursement is really quick. Lots of the companies have like apps now where you just have to take a picture of the bill and then submit it and then you get direct deposit into your bank account. What could be easier? Um, pet insurance is really nice for veterinarians and the, and the vet clinic because clients are usually more likely to choose the best option available as opposed to like the B plan or the, even the C plan. So that means that veterinarians can practice that best medicine, right? We can make those, um, those best recommendations and actually be able to follow through with them, which is really nice for us to be able to do the best job that we can. And having pet insurance improves client compliance and therefore practice profits. So if a veterinarian recommends a procedure or a treatment, the owners are more likely to follow through and actually do it, which means that we end up earning more money too. So from a business standpoint, pet insurance is a good thing 
for our facilities. And it's a good thing for the pets because they get treated better. So let's talk about some terminology that goes along with pet insurance. Uh, so pet insurance is not exclusive to these terms. Uh, these, a lot of these terms are going to be just industry, like insurance industry specific. Uh, so you might already be familiar with these terms, especially if you have like house insurance or car insurance. Like if you work with MPI, you probably know some of these terms already. So the first term is the deductible. The deductible is the amount that the owner has to pay before the insurance company offers compensation. So, um, you know, if you have MPI, you get into a car accident, you have to pay like the first $200 of the bill, they pay the rest kind of thing. So deductibles could be a per incident deductible or an annual deductible. Um, so that's a choice that you can make. It will affect the fees, which, which either choice that you pay, okay? Uh, a per incident means that, okay, your dog gets hit by a car, you have to pay your deductible and then they reimburse the rest. Uh, two weeks later, your dog, I don't know, eats something toxic and needs to be treated for toxicity, you have to pay your deductible and then the insurance pays the rest. If you have an annual deductible, um, you pay the first, I don't know, let's say $500 of the bill um, and then after that point, you don't pay again. The company reimburses you for everything because you've met your deductible. So the premium is the amount that the owner pays monthly or annually to maintain the insurance policy. So again, if you have MPI, um, you pay, well, you can either pay the full amount up front every year, or you can break it into four payments, or you can pay monthly. Uh, so that premium is how much you pay to secure the insurance policy. So the premium is going to vary. There's lots of things that affect the premium. So let's look at those factors. The amount of your deductible and whether if it's per incident or annual is going to affect the premium. The lower the deductible, the higher the premium. The higher the, pre the deductible, sorry, yeah, the higher the deductible, the lower the premium. Um, as well, an it per incident deductible is probably going to be a cheaper uh, premium than an annual deductible. Um, the amount of the copay, which we'll, um, we'll talk about next, um, the, if there's payout limits. So if there's a per incident payout limit, an annual payout limit, or a lifetime payout limit is going to affect your premiums. Uh, so, um, I'm thinking probably per incident is cheapest, then annual, and then lifetime is probably going to be the most expensive. And again, it's going to depend what those limits are. Different species and different breeds of pets are going to cost different amounts of money. Um, you have like, I'm trying to think of a pretty incident free breed. I don't know. They all have issues. But anyway, something like say uh, an English Bulldog. Um, so they've got that severely brachycephalic face. Um, they have all that wrinkly skin. Those guys tend to have a lot of health issues. So they're going to be more expensive to insure because they're more likely to use the insurance. Whether the animal is intact versus spayed or neutered. A spayed or neutered animal is going to be cheaper to insure than an intact animal. An intact animal has a lot more potential for getting sick uh, with those reproductive organs than a spayed or neutered animal because they just plain don't have those organs. Uh, and then lastly, the age of the pet. If you get insurance when the animal is young, uh, you end up paying less for your premium amounts than getting uh, an insurance policy when the animal gets old. Because a young animal is less likely to actually use the insurance, whereas an older animal is much more likely to use the insurance. Uh, so the premium basically is kind of a bit of a measure of how much potential there is that you'll take money out of those insurance pots, okay? Um, so let's talk about copay. So this is one of the factors that affects the premium. So copay is the percentage of the bill that the owner is responsible for after the deductible has been met. So not every insurance company is going to have a copay. Um, you might be able to pay your way out of having a copay. Uh, so usually it's going to make up about 10 to 20% of the bill. So let's say you have a $1,000 bill. 
um, that your vet has presented you with. Your deductible is $200. So after $200, the pet insurance company will pay the remaining $800. But if you have a copay, you might have to pay, let's say, 10% of that. So you pay your deductible of $200 plus your copay of 10% of $800, which is 80 bucks. So you end up having to pay $280 of the $1,000 bill, okay? Um, an exclusion is any situation, event, or medical condition that is not covered by the insurance policy. Uh, so I have a couple common exclusions to talk about here. So often behavior stuff is not covered by insurance companies. They, I mean, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. It depends on the company, but that's a fairly common um, exclusion. Nutraceuticals. So we have pharmaceuticals, which are drugs, and we have nutraceuticals, which are like food-based supplements. Um, so like vitamins and stuff like that. Uh, nutraceuticals are often not covered because they're not true medications. Uh, diets, often not covered. Um, I spoke with uh, one, of the, um, one of the pet insurance company reps, and she was saying that diets aren't covered because uh, they just can't ensure that it's only the insured pet in the house that's eating that food, right? So even though diets are presented as prescription diets in the vet clinic, um, that's often excluded from pet insurance companies, or policies, I mean. Pre-existing conditions. This is a big one that you should be really aware of. There aren't any pet insurance companies that will cover a pre-existing condition. A pre-existing condition is some type of illness that the animal had prior to getting the insurance policy plan. So this happens a lot. Owners will come into the clinic, hey, I think my cat's sick. It turns out the cat has diabetes. They say as they're paying their bill, whew, this is expensive. I should look into getting pet insurance. And that's where you can chime in and say, great idea. But just so you know, um, the diabetes would count as a pre-existing condition and that would not be covered. So insurance isn't going to cover an illness that's already known to be present in the animal. Um, sometimes people will try to uh, fudge the numbers a little bit and pretend that they didn't get that diagnosis, get pet insurance, and then go to a different doctor to get the diagnosis again. But Lots of vet, or lots of pet insurance companies won't cover anything. Like they have, I think we talked about it coming up. They have a waiting period. So often it might be like, you know, six months or something, or like two months after getting the policy that they won't cover those like illnesses if they come up, okay? So that's something that we should warn owners about when they make that joke to us. Great idea. Get pet insurance because your animal's probably going to get sick with other things. But just so you know, the diabetes wouldn't be covered. Uh, congenital abnormalities. So congenital abnormalities are um, uh, things that are abnormal at birth. So the animal was born with an abnormality. So for instance, I know a dog that has um, some strange things going on in their hind end. So they always have anal gland problems. Their tail is malformed. It's all uh, like kinky it like kind of bends funny um and she has problems with her back legs as well so uh if you have a pet insurance plan th that doesn't cover congenital abnormalities anything related to that wouldn't be covered uh okay so payout limits the payout limit is basically the maximum amount that will be paid out um for the plan so it could be per incident so maybe they will pay up to $2,000 per incident. It could be annual. Maybe they'll pay up to $10,000 per year. Uh, or it could be lifetime. So um, some places even have unlimited lifetime coverage. But I'll tell you what, that's going to be a lot higher of a premium than let's say a $2,000 per incident coverage. Uh, and then waiting period, that's what I was talking about with when I was talking about the pre-existing conditions. The waiting period is the period during which the policy will not cover any illness or injury of the pet. Uh, it's going to vary from company to company and it's going to depend when you get the pet insurance set up. Uh, there, there's, I think honestly, all the pet insurance companies will like kind of 
work with vet clinics that you can give them free trials of pet insurance if the pet has come in for an exam. That is good as of that exam because the doctor's certifying that the animal is healthy at that point. So then there won't be any waiting periods. Uh, so that's kind of a nice thing. But if you just spontaneously get um, insurance, that waiting period might uh, be a factor to consider. So sometimes it's a couple weeks, sometimes it's a couple months. For things like knee injuries, I think, I, I think almost every company, if not every company, it's a six month waiting period. So your animal can't blow out a cruciate and require surgery um, and you just like fake it, get the insurance and go to another place to get the diagnosis because that's a really expensive surgery. Okay, so that waiting period kind of protects the insurance company from that kind of insurance fraud. Uh, so if we're defining a pre-existing condition, that's any injury or illness that was contracted, manifested, which means it showed up, or incurred, which means it happened to the animal, before the policy's effective date. So anything that occurred before the insurance kicked in. A hereditary condition, that's sometimes included in um, the um, uh, exclusions. A hereditary condition is something that's passed from the genes of the parents to the genes of the offspring. So it's a genetic condition for, that's passed from the parents to the, to, the, uh, to the puppy or the kitten. And then congenital abnormalities are abnormalities present at birth. Uh, so those are some of the terms then. Uh, so some of the most commonly claimed conditions I have broken down by cat and dog here. So cats... I mean, dogs, canines, uh, their most commonly claimed conditions, you're gonna see ear infections quite a bit. Um, skin allergies, oh, if you have an, if you get a species that's prone to allergy, or I mean, if you get a breed that's prone to allergies, just go ahead and get pet insurance because allergy treatments can be really expensive and they're ongoing for life. So it's a good idea um, if you're getting one of those breeds that tends to have allergies a lot to go ahead and get the insurance and then hot spots because those are a pretty common skin infection in dogs and then for cats uh, UTI is a urinary tract infection um, so think things like blocked cats or um, you know cats with stones in the bladder or crystals in the bladder or just uh, bladder infections Gastritis, so we can use our word parts to figure out that gastra is the stomach and itis is the inflammation of. Uh, so if stomach upsets in cats. And then renal failure, uh, which is kidney disease. So, oh God, I can't remember the stat. I think it's by age 12, maybe 100% of cats have kidney disease. I'll, I'll have to look up the stat and, um, and share it with you but kidney disease is very common in cats. Uh, their, their kidneys are just designed to work really hard and they burn out quick. Uh, so most cats end up with renal failure at some point in their life. Uh, okay, so that's everything that I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, about pet insurance and wellness plans. So they're, I'm sure you can see that they're very complimentary. Having both means that your animal is basically set up for life when it comes to vet care. And that's a good thing for your animal. Uh, so you can go ahead then and work on our in-class assignment uh, for the pet insurance. So I gave you guys, you can access it on your, um, on the bright space in the classroom. But basically, I gave you guys an in-class assignment of reviewing the websites for the three most popular pet insurance companies that you'll see within Winnipeg. So those three are um, Pet Plan, True Panion, and Pet Secure. So I gave you the links to their websites in that assignment, and I also gave you a chart to fill in. Um, so uh, it asks you questions like what kind of coverage is available, what deductibles are available, payout limits, etc., so that you can get familiar with the three different companies. Owners will often ask you guys, well, what's the best one? 
Um, so I'm basically giving you this exercise that you can get familiar with all three. And then you'll be able to share with them, well, you know, everyone has different, um, different things. You can maybe even pull out this chart and say, here's a chart I made that compares them. Let's look at it together. You will most certainly have brochures available in your clinic uh, that you can distribute. Um, no one's asking you to be an insurance salesman, but you should know that um, pets that have insurance in the animal hospital, that animal hospital is more likely to be successful in terms of like business-wise, making more profit, etc. And a facility that's making more profit means that you are getting a bigger paycheck because they can afford to pay you more and you'll get more raises, right? We also know that animals that have insurance get better care because the owner doesn't need to consider like the fees. They can just go ahead and say yes and get that treatment done because they only have to pay, let's say $280 out of a thousand dollar bill. That's doable. A thousand dollars is a big hit. 280 bucks isn't that bad. So, you know, you scrape by on your groceries for a few weeks and you can cover that 280, but a thousand dollars, that could set you back for a whole year if you don't have awesome income. So I think it is in our best interest to talk about pet insurance with clients. If you have a someone coming in with like a puppy or a kitten, I would recommend it right away especially if they have one of those breeds that's just prone to problems. They get like a Sharpe, they're gonna have skin infections and allergies. I can almost guarantee it. Um, they have um, a Doberman, they're really likely to get dilated cardiomyopathy, right? Uh, bulldogs, pugs, any of those brachycephalics, they often have a lot of problems. Um, Cocker Spaniels and Golden Retrievers have constant ear infections and skin infections. Golden Retrievers and um, uh, German Shepherds are so prone to like cancers. German Shepherds are um, like it was a running joke when I was in tech school. German Shepherds were on the breeds that are prone to list for every single illness. So German Shepherds are just kind of seem like a sickly animal. So if, an, if someone's getting a German Shepherd, really talk to them about getting pet insurance. Um, it, it's just gonna help you, it's gonna help them. They're gonna be happy you made the recommendation because they'll be in a better place financially then with their animal and they can take the best care possible of their animal, right? So again, I don't think anyone's asking you to be an insurance salesman but I think it is a good thing to just mention to people. You don't have to do a hard sell, but I think it's a good thing to say. Um, I was looking at the Quizlet to update it and review it, and there's a note in there that 41, there was a survey done, 41% of clients say that they would get pet insurance if, if the clinic recommended it. So that's like a pretty good stat. That's almost half your client base. If, if almost half your client base has pet insurance, that means almost half of your client base can pay the bill every single time you make a, a best practice medicine recommendation. So that's just a good thing. It's gonna benefit the clinic, it's gonna benefit the pet. Um, okay, so that's everything I have to say about pet insurance then. Um, you can go ahead and read the textbook for a little bit more information. There's definitions in there. Um, maybe they'll explain things a little bit differently for you. So that's a good, good approach to take. Uh, please complete that in-class assignment and then the discussion posted with it that um, has uh, like a bit of a reflection on, uh, on your experience doing the research there for those, uh, those companies. Um, so if you do have any questions about pet insurance or wellness plans, make sure you do please make note of them, ask them in the chat, ask them in the virtual classroom, or go ahead and send me an email. Uh, we want to get those questions answered if there's anything you're unsure about. Okay, thanks so much for listening. Bye!